because of the financial meltdown in the last few months, articles have pointed to a calculation of risk that seems to have uh, gone awry or caused some problems. Now, I'm not a financial expert in any sense, and I have no kind of inside scoop here about what went wrong, but it's not clear to me whether or not the measure of risk that was being used was incorrect or whether or not the CEOs just ignored what the math was telling them. Uh, in, in any event, uh, what I want to do is to explain this method for calculating the risk of a portfolio called value at risk and uh, uh, hopefully give you some understanding of how it works. Now, I want to look at two ways of calculating this. One uses historical data. And the second way uses uh, normal probability distributions. And you'll see the connection. OK, now, to uh, make this relatively simple, I want to uh, make some assumptions here. First of all, I want to assume that my portfolio consist of a single stock. Okay. Secondly, I want to assume that uh, I'm going to only be interested in the daily risk uh, one can do similar things for uh, monthly, annually, etc. But there's a slight variation in the calculations involved. Uh, and third, I want to assume that uh, we're going to look at what's called a 95% confidence interval. Now I could replace this and make this 99% uh, confidence level or 90% or whatever. Uh, it might be so desired. And again, you'll see how the connection is. Now, uh, what's the idea here? Well, the idea is that I want to take a look at this portfolio. And uh, so the first one we're going to do is the historical data here. Okay, so as I take a look at the data of how this uh, stock, in this case, has tracked over uh, the last uh, year, two years, or something like this. I want to look at its daily return. Okay, well, so sometimes it's been 0%. Uh, it might have been uh, plus, uh, uh, you know, 3%, uh, oops, 0.03, plus 5%, uh, maybe plus 10%. Or it might have been minus uh, 3%, you know, minus 5%. Maybe I should write it with a percent there, and minus 10% in some days and so forth. Now, if we want to look at the, we want to look at the how often these things occur. So I want to track for all of the the daily returns here. We'll say over a year's period of time. So we may have as many as. Uh, at 250 different uh, uh, trading days. Okay, and so what is this going to look like? Well, actually, it should look something like a normal uh, distribution. If I could make it look that way. Uh, because most of the time, the returns of the stock is not going to move very much. It'll make it a little, little gain, a little loss, and so forth. And then maybe on a rare occasion, it's going to have a, a big gain or it's going to have a, a, a big loss or something like that. Now, of course, we want to measure the risk. And so we're not really worried about a big uh, risk of gain, but um, we might be worried about a big risk of loss. And so for um, the sake of argument here, uh, let's assume we want a 95% confidence level. So what we would like to do is to find maybe the worst 5%. So uh, 
so if I can, I didn't leave myself much room here, did I? So I'd like to find the worst 5% of returns. Well, how could we do this? Well, if we assume that there's 250 trading days, let's see, and if I want to take 5% of that, that looks like that's going to be 12 and a half. So what I would do historically, I would go through my, my data here and find the region between the uh, 12th return and the 13th uh, worst return. Okay, so it might be I might do some extrapolation and figure out where 12 and a half might be on that. And say, for the sake of argument, uh, let's say it occurs at, uh, say, minus 3%. That's a nice round number here. Okay, so what does this mean for us? Well, what this means is that this will be the value at risk in terms of percent. So what we're saying is that 95% uh, of the time, we're not going to have a loss of more than 3%. So that's what our uh, calculations would say that our uh, expectations is that 95% uh, of the time, uh, a, no loss or the loss will be less than, well, uh, less than uh, 3%. Okay, now we can also calculate this and uh, change it into a dollar value. So for example, supposing we had $1,000 uh, in this stock, and so that times a uh, 3% uh, loss here, well, that's that's not going to be very much. So we would say that uh, with 95% uh, certainty, uh, we would not lose more than $30 in a single day on this stock. Okay, so that's the uh, historical way to approach that. Now, how can we do this if we wanted to use a normal probability distribution? Well, as I pointed out above here, I can draw it again maybe, uh, the daily returns appear as if they follow a normal probability distribution. Okay, so what we could do if we wanted to identify the worst 5% or the worst 1%, 5%, then if we calculate the mean and the standard deviation, then we know how to calculate that value, right? Because the lower value here is going to be nothing more than uh, well, let's see, 95%, how it would be something like uh, minus 1.65 times the uh, standard deviation. And that would give the value down here that would be the cutoff point for the uh, lowest. This gives the uh, value of the lowest uh, 5%. And if we wanted to go to uh, the lowest, uh, lowest 1%, then what do we have to do? We would uh, can use a calculator or whatever means we want to. We would want to multiply minus 2.33 times the standard deviation to figure out uh, what the lowest 1% uh, would be down here. And then again, if we wanted to convert this uh, percent, that would be given the value at at risk into a dollar value, we would just have to multiply uh, this by the appropriate dollar amount. Okay, in the next video, I'll actually go through a calculation of this for a specific stock.